All right, so today I'm gonna be breaking down the facial features and giving you my top tips for each one of them. Hi, welcome to Paint Coach. I'm Chris Fornatero here to help simplify oil paint so you can get better faster. Now the demonstrations in this video actually come from a longer demonstration that can be found on my Patreon page. If you're looking for full and real-time painting video tutorials, uh, you can check out my Patreon page. I got them all right there. Also, when you sign up to my Patreon page, you'll get access to my private Facebook group where you can share your paintings, comment on others, get advice. It's just a great positive painting community that we got going there. So if you want to check that out, check out my Patreon page. If you want to see what I am painting on a daily basis, you can follow me on Instagram at Forza43. All right, let's get to this demonstration. All right, so a lot of these tips I'm gonna be talking about in this video, I learned a lot from a portrait painter named Michael Shane Neal. I highly suggest checking him out. I'll put a link to his uh, website and Instagram below. And actually, I highly, highly, highly recommend if you're looking to do portraits to pick up his book. No, I'm not affiliated with him in any way. I don't get any money. He doesn't know I exist really. So I highly recommend this book. A lot of the tips I pulled from this book because it's just so great and he puts into words you know the process you know everything from setting up your studio to you know painting the features to you know how he works with clients for uh, portraits and stuff so highly recommend following him and then picking up his book if you can all right so the first thing we're going to talk about is the eye and the first tip that i have for you is think about painting the eye socket before painting the eye you want to paint the socket first and then place the eye in the socket. Too many times I see people paint an eye and it looks like the eye is flat and sitting on top of the face. It's actually a sphere that's floating in the eye socket. So painting in the dark eye socket first and then placing the eye in it and kind of building everything out from the socket can be a better way to go. All right, tip number two with the eyes is remember that the eye is a sphere and it's curved, meaning the eyelids that wrap around the eye are going to be curved as well. So you want to make sure that you indicate that curve and that the corners of the eyes read as being tucked back around the sphere. Too many times I see people just play, painting flat almond shaped eyes and you don't want to do that. All right, tip number three with the eyes is the whites of the eyes are not as white as you think. I think this is the most common mistake I see with people painting eyes is they tend to make the whites of the eyes a lot brighter than they should be. Always double check this, take a picture of your painting with your phone, put it in black and white, double check it with your reference. You wanna dial this value in correctly and also be aware that the left side and the right side of the eye, since the eyeball itself is a sphere and the whites of this eyes, it's going to be different values values on one side of the eye to the other. You don't just want a plain flat, you know, off white color for the whites of the eyes. Really look at your reference and really see what's going on there. Also, the whites of the eyes tend to be a little bit cooler uh, than other sections. So look for that as well. All right, tip number four is that the iris, the colored part of the eye tends to be lighter on the side that's opposite of the light source. In this demonstration, the light source is coming from the left. So you can see on the right side of the iris, I'm pushing the color a little bit more and lightening the brown and the iris of the eye. Now the catch light, that really strong little dot of reflected light that everybody likes to put in the eye, that is going to be on the side that is closest to the light source. So it's going to be the opposite of the light part of the iris. And now this highlight or catch light, it's going to fall half in the pupil and half in the iris. And the last tip for the eyes, which is probably the most helpful, is paint both eyes at the same time. Bounce back and forth. That way you're developing them together. You're seeing how they're working with each other, the right spacing. A lot of times if you paint one eye to completion and then the other, they're gonna look different and they're not gonna be reading correctly. It's just very helpful to paint both at the same time. All right, on to the nose. The first thing you wanna get with the nose is understand the planes of the nose. If you get these down and understand them at the beginning, it's gonna help you stay on track as you develop the nose because there's a lot of very subtle value shifts and color shifts in the nose, and it's very easy to lose that basic structure. And I like to think of the bridge of the nose as a box and at the end of the nose is like a sphere or a ball. Also be aware that the nose is not flat on the face. It's coming out. A lot of times I see people paint nose and they don't put the right shapes or values in the right areas and they're not pushing the effect of the nose coming out from the face. 
So understanding the planes of the nose is gonna help you achieve that. All right, tip number two is look for warmer colors in the nose. A lot of times noses tend to be a little bit more red. The blood vessels are just closer to the skin. So keep an eye out for that. All right, tip number three is don't get caught outlining the nose. A lot of times I see people feeling that they need to outline things, you know, whether it's the bridge of the nose where it meets the side of the face and they wanna distinguish the bridge of the nose. In this example, my left nostril here, see it pretty much fades or is very close in value to the skin to the left of it. If you lose a line in the nose because values are so close together, that's fine, let it happen. It's gonna read more naturally that way. Last thing you wanna do is start outlining the nostrils or or, you know, outlining certain sections to distinguish where they are. You shouldn't need to do that. Just do the correct values and it will read appropriately. And tip number four is try not to go to straight white for the highlight on the end of the nose. A lot of times people want to push this. They, they see it as very bright, but try your best to restrain and, and to really dial in the correct value here. All right, now it's time for the mouth, probably the most hardest feature to paint, at least it is for me. Now, when you start out painting the mouth, think of it as a part of the muzzle, which is the space below the nose and above the chin. It's this area that's not flat. A lot of people end up painting it flat, but it's curved. So you have to understand the basic shape and form of this so you can construct the mouth appropriately. All right, tip number two is look for the top lip to be darker than the bottom lip also the bottom lip can be broken down into three basic planes you got the inner plane which is closest to the opening of the mouth and then you have the middle plane which tends to catch the most light and then you have the outer plane which angles back in towards the face Also, don't make your lips too much different in value than the skin around it. A lot of times I see people painting the lips a lot darker than they need to be. If you look at a lot of times the edges where the lips meet the skin, it's a very soft, very smooth transition. All right, tip number three is give a lot of attention to the corners of the mouth. Like the eye, the mouth is curved. A lot of times I see people painting just a flat opening in the face and it's actually curved back. So you want these corners to read like they are actually being tucked around and back in the mouth. These corners are also gonna to tend to be a lot softer and cooler than other parts of the mouth. Another tip is be aware of the light source shining on the mouth. So when you're painting the lips, depending on where the light source is, is going to change the values as you go across the mouth. So if the light source is on the left side, the left side of the lips are gonna be a little bit lighter than the dark side. A lot of times I see people paint the lips just one flat value and you lose that curved effect. All right, and the last tip is that with the opening of the mouth, very, very rarely is it a perfect straight line. A lot of times I see people do the opening of the mouth and they just put one perfectly even straight line. You know, you wanna vary that up. Even when the mouth is closed, it's not a perfect line. And a lot of times it's not as dark as you think that it is. So pay attention to that and really dial in 
what you see correctly. All right, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Hopefully you can take these tips and apply them to your next portraits to make them better. Uh, again, if you want the full version of this tutorial, it is on my Patreon page, which can be found in the description below. Also, when you sign up to the Patreon page, you can be a part of my Facebook group, my private Facebook group, and you can actually show me your painting and I can see it and I, other people can see it and they can comment it and give advice. You can give advice, all that good stuff. Uh, if you wanna see what I paint on a daily basis, you can follow me on Instagram at Forza43. I am Chris Fornatero here telling you to go get painting. Whoa, you're still here. You made it to the end of the video. That must mean you really like it. In that case, you should hit the subscribe button. You'd also probably like this video too. And this video. Please pick one. All right, this is getting awkward.